Okay, uh, today we are going to talk about hemoflagellates. Hemo, uh, remember. Hemo means what? Hemo means what? Blood. Okay. Flagellates means what? Parasite having flagella. Everybody, parasite having flagella. Any parasite you know about the, uh, which is having flagella? Any parasite you know which is having flagella? How do you classify uh, parasites? Important. What is the definition of parasite? Definition. What's your name? Ramdas Naik. Huh? Ramdas Naik. Which place you come from? Kupam. Uh. What is the definition of parasite? Parasite. You know, Gangadhar, no? Your name. What is your Gangadhar? Your place, your, you come from which place? Kupam. Okay. Uh, parasite is, everybody, parasite is defined as any organism, any microorganism, depending on, depending on other host for nutrition. The parasite will not uh, uh, prepare their food. They don't prepare whole like this. They they don't prepare their own food. They prepare food and nutrition living on other host. So parasite that infect man, parasite that infect man uh, are studied in human medical parasitology, medical parasitology, the so medical parasitology, medical parasitology. So basically, how do you classify, what's your name next? Uh, how do you classify parasite? How do you classify parasite? How do you classify parasite? You know, what's, what's your name you said? No, no, what? Huh? Remove the mask. No, no more corona. Naveen, oh, okay. How do you classify parasite? What's your name? What's your name? Surya. Surya, okay. Jansi. Uh, what's your name? Huh? Sindhu. Next. Yeah. Supriya. Uh, how do you cla uh, classify parasite? Uh, okay, sit down. Parasites are classified into. Parasites are classified into. Everybody. Parasites are classified into. Unicellular. Unicellular means? Unicellular means? Single cell. Very good. Single cell parasites. Unicellular parasites. Single cell parasites. And multicellular. Multicellular means more than many number of cells. Very good. So unicellular organisms are called protozoa. Unicellular organisms are called unicellular parasites are called protozoa. Unicellular organisms are protozoa. Multicellular organisms are called helminths. Multicellular organisms are called, everybody, multicellular organisms are called helminths. Helminths. They are classified into three types. Take 
tapeworms they are classified into three types why they are called tapeworms they look like tape you have seen tape where it is used tape tape is used where measuring the cloth no it looks like a tape okay it has it's like a tape like next is leaf like worm next is leaf like worm next is leaf like worm next is round worms next is round worms so everybody repeat with me parasites are classified into unicellular example protozoa multicellular they are classified into tape worms leaf like worms and round worms around worms tape worms are called cystodes tape worms are called cystodes tape are tape worms are called cystodes tape worms are called cystodes leaf like worm called trematodes leaf like worms are called trematodes trematodes and round worms round worms called nematodes nematodes cystodes trematodes nematodes everybody repeat with me tape worms are called everybody tape worms are called cystodes leaf like worms are called trematodes t r e trematodes 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 round worms are called round worms are called nematodes round worms are called nematodes round worms are called nematodes okay the protozoa an example important diseases are first first and parasite is entamoeba histolytica you heard this name entamoeba histolytica you heard this name or no it is taken in the class isn't it so what did gives rise to entamoeba histolytica when man get infected with entamoeba histolytica it gives rise to what entamoeba histolytica amoebiasis is what so in describing the parasitology two terms you should remember one is definite host one is definite host definite host other is another is one is definite host what is definite host anybody knows what is definite host what is definite host anybody knows what is definite host what is definite host immunity immunity what is definite host definition of definite host definite host there are two types of uh, two types of host everybody one definite host second one is intermediate host definite host and intermediate host what is definite host definite host is where adult adult 
are sexual form of sexual form of sexual form of parasites reside it is adult form of the parasite present in the human host okay sexual form or adult form sexual form everybody De definitive host or uh definitive host is defined as where adult form of parasite or sexual form of parasites resides in okay intermediate host is defined as yeah repeat it me larval stage of larval stage of parasite larval stage of parasite reside or a sexual stage of a sexual stage of parasite reside okay a sexual stage of parasite reside the sexual stage of parasite reside the man acts as intermediate host in two parasitic infection everybody man acts as man acts as intermediate host man acts as intermediate host everybody man acts as intermediate host two parasitic disease number 1 malaria second is echinococcus granulosus echinococcus granulosus is otherwise is not called as dog tape worm Echinococcus granulosus, dog tape worm. Man harbors the larval stage. Man harbors the asexual stage. Asexual stage or larval 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 stage. a sexual stage or larval stage a sexual stage or larval stage so moving on to the important parasite up till now what you have covered Entamoeba histolytica. Entamoeba histolytica. Entamoeba histolytica. Man get infected by the consumption of food and water. Food and water, which is contaminated with quadrinucleate. Order to create the cyst of entamoeba. Histolytica. Man get infected by the consumption of quadrinucleate cyst of entamoeba histolytica. So, so man in the in the it it goes and resides in the large intestine, especially. Sigmoid colon, 
in the sigmoid colon. Sigmoid colon. So sigmoid colon it gives rise to infection called infestation called amoebic. Descent. Amoebic descent. What is diarrhea and dysentery? How do you define diarrhea? Diarrhea is a passing of the low stool. Dysentery is when feces is mixed with pus and blood. When feces is mixed with feces and blood, it is called as amoebic descent. When feces, feces means stool, excreta, when it is mixed with blood and mucus, when it is mixed with blood and mucus, it is called as dysentery. One more organism which causes uh, dysentery is bacillary dysentery, that is called by Shigella. Bacillary bacillary dysentery, okay, that is very important. Now, uh, next parasite we move on is Giardia Lamnia. Again, it is a trophozoite, is, it is like badminton. And this is cyst. And the man get infected by the congenital of cyst. Giardiasis. And it especially is important, it causes steatoria. Steatoria means fat will not get fat will not be absorbed. Fat will not be absorbed. It is called steatoria. Okay. Then the third one is genital flagellate. Genital flagellate is a sexually transmitted parasitic disease. Parasitic infestation, sexually transmitted parasitic infection, that is trichomonas vaginalis. Trichomonas vaginalis, trichomonas vaginalis. So there is no cyst. It gives rise to vaginitis and urethritis. It gives rise to vaginitis and urethritis. It gives rise to vaginitis and urethritis. Now, this is a genetary urinary flagellates. Genito. In the flagellates. Now moving on to hemoflagellates, which are present in the blood. Today's topic is hemoflagellates. Now you know what is definitive host, what is intermediate host, and what is the no everything when you are eating these should know root of infection. Second is uh, root of infection, whether it's oral or uh, by the mosquito bite or through soil. So, all the roots you should know how the parasite enters the body. Okay? Uh, infective form. Infective form. And third one is habitat. I mean, fourth one is pathogenicity. What, how it enters and where it gets resides. Pathogenicity. The fifth one is life cycle. And sixth one is lab diagnosis. If possible, pharmacology people 
not teaching you we'll tell you in simple the treatment treatment that is prophylaxis prophylaxis so on this lines you should read about the parasite you make a flow chart you take uh, every day you make a flow chart and go through it in the examination it will be easy to remember okay now let us see what are the hemoflagellates hemoflagellates simply means they are present in the blood they are present in the hemoflagellate means they are simply present in the blood that's why they are called as giardia lamella is also a flagellate which is present in the intestine so look at this uh, these are flagellates uh, flagella are slender long and thread like at the extension setup of intracellular exoneme and uh, flagella arise from the kinetoplasm made up of copies of mitochondria so, so this, this is like this this is the flagella okay this is the flagella this is called exoneme and this is called kinetoplast this is called kinetoplast okay this is kinetoplast this is this is all exoneme and this is kinetoplast flagella is a long thread like structure so intestinal as i told you giardia lamella is flagellated parasite which harbors in the duodenum and jejunum duodenum jejunum it's all one of the intestinal flagellate and it gives us as a steatorrhea steatorrhea is malabsorption of the fat diagnosis is oval shaped cyst pear shaped motile trophozoites in the stool drug of choice is treatment of metronidazole metronidazole please write down all these things giardia lamella man get infected by the consumption of cyst present in the food and water habitat of the parasite in the intestines duodenum and jejunum so instead of writing in a row you have to write write this okay name of the parasite okay giardia lamella okay root of infection pico oral habitat duodenum and jejunum so diagnosis demonstration of cyst and prophozoite in stool treatment metronidazole see 1 2 3 4 5 life cycle is same man parasite okay there is no life cycle it is a giardia lamella man get infected by consumption of food and water with cyst of giardia lamella that is the life cycle is it clear is it clear repeat with me giardia lamella occurs in two forms it is a very common parasite in the intestine man get infected by consumption of food and water which is contaminated with cysts of giardia lamella habitat of this parasite 
habitat habitat of this parasite where they live duodenum and jejunum it causes malabsorption of the fat malabsorption of the fat malabsorption of the fat diagnosis is done by demonstration of the cyst and uh, cyst is something like like this and pear shaped trophozoite cyst and the trophozoite drug of choice for the treatment is uh, stool examination you have to demonstrate cyst or trophozoite diagnosis is metronidazole diagnosis is metronidazole metronidazole is a drug of choice metronidazole is drug of choice okay now moving on to the next uh, so this is all the uh, not very important diantem of fragilis intestinal fragilis different from other internal fragile it is harmless it is common cell it can cause mucus diarrhea genital i said trichomonas vaginalis sexually transmitted everybody write trichomonas vaginalis trichomonas vaginalis trichomonas trichomonas vaginalis sexually transmitted parasitic infection 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 it produces vulvo vaginitis it produces vulvo vaginitis it produces vulvo vaginitis it produces vulvo vaginitis it produces foul smelling vaginal discharge it produces foul smelling vaginal discharge and uh, it gives rise to what is called as strawberry appearance of mucosa ph is more than 4.5 ph is more than 4.5 So, trichomonas vaginalis, sexually transmitted infection, no cyst, it causes vaginitis. Okay, these three four points you should remember. Sexually transmitted parasitic infection, it causes vaginitis. Gives rise to foul smelling discharge. Gives rise to foul smelling discharge, and uh, pH of the vagina will be more than four point five. Okay, written down. Always you should bring one separate notebook for microbiology. Henceforth, I am going to take Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. 12 to 1 your third year no third year meant okay good written down so moving on to the Okay, labor diagnosis is detection of motile uh, pear shaped trophozoite in wet, wet mound, freshly collected specimens such as vaginal secretion. Drug of choice is metronidazole. Both husband partner, sexual partner should be treated. Okay, it is in the stool. You have to demonstrate it. Motile trophozoite. Both sexual partner should be treated. drug of choice is metronidazole metronidazole
this is trichomona pseudogonad no cyst please remember this is no cyst okay no cyst is present written down everything this is hemophlagellates the flagellates are produced or found in the bud that there are two one is leishmania another is trypanosoma leishmania everybody leishmania leishmania trypanosoma leishmania trypanosoma five times everybody leishmania trypanosoma leishmania trypanosoma leishmania trypanosoma leishmania trypanosoma leishmania trypanosoma leishmania trypanosoma so until now we have finished entamoeba histolytica giardial amblia trichomona sojinalis how many repeat entamoeba histolytica man get infected by consumption of food and water contaminated with quaternucleate cyst of entamoeba histolytica induce rise to amoebic dysentery giardial amblia man get infected by consumption of food and water contaminated with cyst of giardiasis the habitat of this parasite is in duodenum and jejunum duodenum and jejunum duodenum and jejunum duodenum and jejunum next the flagellates that are present in blood flagellates everybody flagellates that present in the blood are trypanosoma leishmania trypanosoma and leishmania trypanosoma how many parasite you remember now first three no entamoeba giardia trichomonas now hemophlagellate trypanosoma and leishmania trypanosoma and leishmania so these are the various form not necessary to remember all these things this is a this a mastigot pro mastigot epi mastigot tripo mastigot don't remember all this thing it's not necessary for you i'll tell you what is important and so so you uh, write the diagram of a mastigot this is a mastigot okay this is nucleus this is thanatoplast and this is this is nucleus this is kinet of blast and this is plasma the the flagella which is running inside the body is called axoni so it is non flagellated a mastigot means everybody a mastigot means without flagella a mastigot means a mastigot means a mastigot means a mastigot means next one is pro mastigot pro mastigot you have to write this this is nucleus this is kinetoplast this is right this right now 
they were very uh, two are important that epimastigot tripomastigot they are not important okay so what is the what is the difference between uh, the undulating it cannot apply it comes from here it runs along the body that is kinetoplast that is uh, epimastigot kinetoplast which comes flagella comes behind the nucleus is called tripomastigot that is the difference it's depending on where flagella arises that's important you remember these two important exoneme kinetoplast exoneme flagella a mastigot means without flagella a mastigot means flagella pro mastigot means with flagella pro mastigot means with flagella okay So in Lishmania, Lishmania don't vanish. Everybody, Lishmania, Lishmania don't vanish. Only two forms are present: a mastigot, a mastigot, and found in the man. A mastigot found in the man. Pro mastigot is found in the insect. A mastigot found in the red regis. A mastigot found in the man. Pro mastigot found in the insect. Promastigot found in the insect. Promastigot is found in the insect. A mastigot found in the man. Promastigot found in the insect. A mastigot found in the man. Promastigot found in the insect. So these are all not important. Trypanosoma, trypanomastigot. Epimastigot, tripomastigot forms are seen. Tripomastigot is the most di diagnostic form. Insect vector, both epimastigot, tripomastigot found later being infected to man. Tripomastigot is infected to right in Trypanosoma cruzi. Trypanosoma cruzi. Trypanosomes, epigost, tripomastigots are infected to man. Right, right. Tripomastigot. Tripomastigot. Tripomastigots are infected to man. Okay, tripomastigots are infected to man. Tripomastigots are infected to man in case of trypanosomes. Okay, shall we continue? Next. Leishmania don't vary causes. Visceral leishmaniasis, it is called as Kalaza. What it is called as? Everybody. Leishmania don't vanish. Leishmania don't vanish. Leishmania don't vanish. Right? Uh, name of the parasite, Leishmania don't vanish. Infection caused by Leishmania don't vanish is Kalaza or visceral leishmaniasis. Third point. Vector. Vector, it is transmitted by sand fly. It is sand. It is put Transmitted by what fly? Sand fly. Sand fly. So it is transmitted by sand fly. And uh, the geological name, biological name is Phlebotomus. Argentipus. It is Zoological name for this sandflies, Phlebotomus argentipus. So, pentads, fever, hepatomegaly, weight loss, hypoglamoglobinemia, and pancytopenia. Pentads mean five. One is fever, fever, both liver and spleen get enlarged. Hepatosplenomegaly, weight loss,
इंक्रीज इन गामा ग्लोब लेंस एंड फिफ्थ वन इज पैंसर्ट ऑफ इंक्रीज इन डिक्रीज इन दी सेल्स पैंसर्ट ऑफ इनिया इज इन द सेल्स एवरीबडी इट गिव्स राइज टू फीवर हिपेटोस्प्लेनो मेगाली हिपेटोस्प्लेनो मेगाली मींस लिवर एंड स्प्लीन गेट एनलार्ज्ड मेगाली मींस एनलार्जमेंट हिपेटोस्प्लेनो मेगाली हाइपर गामा ग्लोबिनीमिया व्हाट आर द इम्यूनोग्लोबुलिन्स हाउ मेनी क्लासेस ऑफ इम्यूनोग्लोबुलिन्स आर देयर फाइव यू रिमेंबर विद द मेमोनिक गेम्ड आईजीजी आईजीए आईजीएम आईजीई आईडीजी ओके ऑल इम्यूनोग्लोबुलिन्स आर इंक्रीज्ड and uh, pancytopenia there is a decrease in the cells hyperpigmentation mainly seen hyperpigmentation in the, thick, the skin will become black especially in cases which are seen in india hyperpigmentation so you remember this pentard fever hypertosplenomegaly weight loss hyperglamoglobinemia increase in the hyperglobinemia and decrease in the cells decrease in the cells lab diagnosis lab diagnosis nishmana don't worry you have to st stay in the you have to take aspiration from uh, spleen and bone marrow and uh, antibody immunochromatography you can do the uh, look for rk39 antigen treatment amphotericin b or pentavalent antimonials treatment is lipos lipos liposomal amphotericin b or pentavalent antimonial lab diagnosis indirect chromatography antibodies against rk39 okay look for the ld bodies lishman donvan bodies lishman donvan med so all of you will be given uh, in your uh, they have got this thing no uh, whatsapp group no yes. it will be given in the form of uh, uh, pdf all these notes just listen what i am saying okay so next time we'll take preparation okay So every uh, when tu Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, between twelve ten to one o'clock. Okay, we'll regular classes. Okay. Hello, hello. Incoming.